I'm gonna go after this Charybdis for this fight. Uh, even with her third ability, we should be able to catch up to her no problem. I'll go ahead and two, auto attack ultimate. And then the ultimate should be enough to kill her. Moonlon is on her way to us, but same thing. We do a lot of damage with this build. Auto attack in between every single ability, as you saw me do so there. We'll turn on to the uh, Athena, and it should be a pretty easy one. Team fight, very nice. Hello, hope you're doing well. Today we're playing some more Morgan Le Fay, and I truly, really have been enjoying a lot uh, of the mid laners this season. Um, despite the fact that I don't think mages are too strong, I've really been enjoying these utility, you know, CC based uh, mages, or maybe even some of the healers. Uh, and just overall been having a blast in mid lane, despite the fact that I thought I was going to hate it. Uh, trust me, I don't like it as much as mid lane last season, considering you can play any mage and do well. Uh, now I feel like we're a lot more limited in the mages that we're allowed to play, just because everyone's a bit tankier. Uh, it's just always probably better to play a hunter uh, this season, because hunters have so many items and so many avenues to actually deal with these tankier you know, enemy team. Uh, such as Aussie, Kinsai's, not Aussie, sorry, Kinsai's Executioner, Dominance, you know, all of these items, Titan's Bane, sometimes. Um, but even though mages lack these tools, they still have some tools uh, to deal with the tankier characters. You have to build pretty heavily into them. Uh, but even then, if you pick a character that has really high utility, such as Morgan Le Fay, then it could go well for you. Uh, with that being said, in this video we're going to talk about Morgan Le Fay's abilities, and then I want to go into straight talking about the positioning, uh, and then eventually I'll go over uh, the build as our Loki kind of decided to just die in mid. <laughs> um, so with that, I think that's a long enough intro for me. Let's start going over Morgan Le Fay's abilities, shall we? Uh, starting with Morgan Le Fay's passive, as I should be able to survive this no issue. She's kind of low on mana, actually. I want to try to turn this. I'm going to go in for the kill. Uh, I'm going to place my three in front of her. She juked back, so now I can hit her with the one over here. Won't be enough to kill her, but the clone... <laughs> she did die to the clone. Nice job. Uh, all right, I wasted way too much time without talking about the abilities. That's probably the longest intro I have ever done to any video. Empowered Blade, Morgan the Fae's ability. Uh, sorry, passive. Whenever you hit an enemy god with any ability, you actually place a mark on them. Uh, with each mark that you have active on an enemy player, you actually gain a small amount of power. If you were to gain the max marks, which is uh, five symbols, then Morgan Le Fay actually becomes empowered, gaining double the amount of magical power and reducing the cooldown of consuming power by 10 seconds. If you're wondering what consuming power is, it's her ultimate. So you actually get a reduction in the ultimate um, from actually using abilities and getting those marks on people. Uh, all right, moving forward, Sigil Mastery is her first ability. And this is the ability that I tend to go in for the level first. Um, with this being said, what does this ability actually do? Well, put simply, uh, it's a circle in the ground, but it has two parts to it. Um, it actually is technically two circles, uh, both of them dealing a decent amount of damage. It's an inner circle and an outer circle that happen in close uh, relation to each other, if you will. It's going to be the smaller circle, circle first and then the outer bigger circle second. Both of them will do damage like I mentioned. But the cool thing is hitting the second circle is going to have a different effect. And the even more wild thing is that there are three different versions of this ability that you can choose. Um, the way you go about picking which version you use is put simply whenever you click the number or key bind that you have assigned to this ability, then actually first version, second version, and third version uh, will take up your first, second, and ability slot. So according to whatever button you press after, uh, you will get a different version. Now, first off, all versions do the same exact thing in terms of damage. They all do the same amount of damage, and they all have an inner and outer circle with the outer circle cup coming second in terms of time, timing. Uh, but the second circle is the one that matters for this specifically, and you only have to hit the second circle to get these effects, not the first. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first version of this ability is going to be a fear so whoever gets caught by the second circle is actually going to get feared away from the middle um, and then the second version is going to be a slow field so this one is going to actually create a slow field on the ground uh, and it'll just kind of preside for a couple of seconds 
The third one is where it gets a bit interesting. The third ability will actually do a couple of interesting things. Most importantly, it will actually spawn a clone, right? A clone of yourself. But the important part about this clone is it will actually auto attack the person that you hit with this. If you hit multiple people, then you will get multiple clones, each again, auto attacking the specific target that you hit with this ability. Um, the cool thing is this clone has early game specifically, it really can't get one shot by, uh, by anything other than abilities. If you're trying to auto attack this clone, it's going to take a good three auto attacks and considering you're up against a mage most likely, it's going to be very long, you know, it's going to be a very long time that this clone is actually alive and auto attacking them, which means that can technically be an extra, you know, 40, 50, 60 damage. Why is this important? Put simply in the early game, that's a lot. Um, in the early game, you saw me get a kill on the enemy X shell. She, I usually would not have gotten that kill if I went for any other version of this ability, but the clone killed her. She, she got auto attacked twice and died, right? This is important to the early game uh, specifically. In the late game, you just want to use the fear version. It's always the best and the clone gets one shot. And even then, you know, the CC is going to be better than one auto attack in the late game. Uh, but in the early game, this matters. You want to kind of decide what which version of the first ability you want to use. Um, and a lot of the time, unless you're trying to CC someone specifically, uh, then you want to use the third version to get that extra damage in and also slow them because they're going to be auto attacking your clone, which slows them. There are a lot of reasons I have spent way too much time on this ability, uh, but just know it's very in-depth as to which you want to use. Late game, it becomes a bit easier to just choose the fear always, basically. Um, now moving forward, as I die here to the Ixshell alt rip, a second ability, another two-parter, I know, shocker. Uh, so this one is actually going to be a knock up and then a knock back. You saw me use it there. Uh, it has two parts. The first part is a rectangle in front of you where you will spawn a dragon and the dragon will knock everyone in that small rectangle in front of you up. And then after that, the dragon will take flight forward and knock everyone in its path back. Um, so pretty interesting ability, very, very good for peeling people off of you. Uh, but also specifically, it does a lot of damage. If someone gets hit by both of these, not only are they CC'd for the entire duration, uh, but they're also taking a pretty significant amount of damage in return. Uh, moving forward, third ability. This ability is very, very good. It's not as comprehensive as her other abilities, and it doesn't do as much damage as her other abilities. Uh, but in some situations, it actually can do more damage than both of the other abilities. Uh, but let me explain it. It's going to be a line attack that will pass through all minions uh, and uh, jungle camps, but it will actually stop on enemy gods hit and explode. If you don't hit anything, it will just explode at max range. But if you were to hit an enemy, or sorry, an enemy god, it will actually explode on them. Um, what this does is not only do they take damage from the initial impact, but now they are actually taking tick damage and anyone at the end of this ability, when it explodes, will take this tick damage. Now, it's not a lot of damage from the tick, uh, the damage over time, but if you were to actually, as an enemy, when this mark is applied on you, use your escape ability, you will refresh it, again, taking the entirety of the damage over time, again, hitting someone with the impact initial burst damage, then hitting someone, uh, and then having them take that damage over time, having them use and escape and take that damage over time again, is a lot of damage on top of that this ability is super long this is one of the longer range abilities in the game which means you can actually hit people with this damage without getting damaged in return uh one more thing that i forgot to mention is it gives you a lot of movement speed once you level it up for this reason some people kind of decide to use this as a level up first um moving on uh, let's talk about the ultimate finally this has been a big portion of the video but before i talk about the ultimate i want to let you know my discord is down in the description if you want to play or chat with me that's the way to do so also if you just need people to play smite with we have a lot of people in this community so if you need people to play smite with that would also be the perfect place to do so uh moving on as the six shell should probably die in but no issue uh the ultimate you saw me use it there Again, a two-parter. I know, shocker, her entire kit has two parts to it, every ability. Uh, the first part is going to be a very large cone in front of you. It's not going to be that wide, but it's going to be very large in length. And what it does is it's go actually going to consume all of the marks that you have on the field. So like I mentioned with the passive, 
you apply a mark onto someone, you can see it over Erlangshan right now, uh, whenever you hit them with abilities. Uh, now, these marks can be applied, you can get up to 5 marks on a single target, but you can actually get more than 5 marks by, you know, like I mentioned, applying this mark onto multiple people as opposed to just one target. Uh, the cool thing about this is that the first part of the ultimate is just consuming these stacks. You will actually just consume, everyone in that cone will have all their stacks stripped. You will consume those stacks and gain power from your passive uh, for having them. But also, interestingly, they will take more damage depending on how many stacks they have on them. And even more interesting, depending on how many stacks you consume, there will be a different uh, kind of... Uh, it will affect the second part of this. The second part of the ultimate is you get to shoot out three very long range uh, projectiles that will damage the enemy, any anything in their path, uh, but also heal you for a small portion. Now, how do the stacks that you consume during the first part of the ult affect the second part of the ult? Well, put simply, they make the lines, these projectiles, wider. How much wider? If you were to consume max stacks, they, it will be very wide. It won't take up the whole lane, but it'll help you hit them a lot more, and it will also help you hit it on more people. A bigger area means a bigger chance to hit multiple people, which means you're healing more, you're doing more damage, and also I forgot to mention this ability makes you CC immune. So much packed into this ability. A truly beautiful ability. This character's kit works very well together because all of her abilities combo off of each other. To do her entire full combo, you will do the two, knocking them up and back into a wall or something, which will guarantee the first ability using the fear with it. Um, you're actually going to fear them in a direction where you can then go ahead and hit your three and then go straight into the alt. And then from then on, if anyone is alive after that, I'd be very surprised. Specifically because I'm going to tell you that the very best thing you can do as a Morgan Le Fay player is auto attack in between this combo. So we mentioned the combo was two, one, three, four. It would actually be auto attack two, auto attack one, auto attack three, auto attack four. Uh, auto attack at the end of four if they somehow are still alive um very very interesting stuff in this regard uh now i was going to talk a bit about positioning but because i spent so much time talking about the abilities i might as well just consider this a morgan Le Fay guide uh, i'll talk about positioning here a bit with morgan Le Fay, you don't have an escape so you want to make sure you're staying out of the front line because if you were to caught out, be caught out by anyone there's no getting away pretty much uh but the thing is with morgan Le Fay. If you notice in this fight, I'm kind of going in, using my abilities, and then instantly backing back up behind cover. This is what you want to do with all mages. It's a bit more important with Morgan Le Fay, however, because why? She doesn't have an escape. If you do get caught up to, you have no actual instant way to put distance in between you and the enemy through a movement ability. But the cool thing is, movement is not the only way to save yourself there is also peeling for yourself what this means is sure you might not be able to gain distance between you and the enemy with an ability but you can stop them from gaining distance on you even though you're not actively you know dashing halfway across the map you can stop them from dashing across the map towards you right uh and because if you've seen her kit we talked about it before she has a lot a lot of cc crowd control imagine this right the enemy athena dashes after me i'm going to use my two to knock her up and knock her back i'm going to combo my two with my one which will then fear her even further away hitting her with my three will give me some extra damage but import most importantly give me some movement speed right and if somehow she still catches up to me i'm going to alt become cc immune if i need to heal then i'll shoot out the the projectiles if not i'll just walk away with my cc immunity right uh but the downside to having this uh kind of uh, what's the word the downside to having this kind of play style as opposed to just having a regular escape is that you're using these forms of escape or forms to get away as damage as well so if you're choosing to hold them to get away then you're not going to be doing any damage if you're using them to do damage then you're not going to have them when you need them to run away so what does this mean? This means you have to build full cooldown reduction, and I would recommend that either way, but you need to build full cooldown reduction so you can do both. You want to be able to CC people as much as possible and to do damage as much as possible, but you don't want to do damage at the sacrifice of you not having the ability when you need it to escape. 
right? This can be a bit, this can be solved a bit by having good positioning. Like I mentioned, always stay behind your tanks. If you can find cover, find cover. After using an ability, you can back off. Uh, and then once you have it again, that's when you go in. Uh, so these things can be nullified, but the truth of the matter is you want to be able to use abilities as much as possible, not only for the damage, but for the CC, not only for the CC, but when you do use it for damage, you want the smallest downtime from you either doing more damage or having to use them to get away. You don't, you want the least time of being vulnerable and also the least time bef between doing damage, right? Cooldown reduction is very important. That doesn't mean that you have to technically go into a Chronos Pendant, even though I'm not completely against that. I really like Sands of Time. Sands of Time, to this day, is the item that gives you the most power of any item once it is upgraded. And it gives you 20% cooldown reduction. So that's what we're starting off with our build. It also makes it pretty difficult to run out of mana in the early to mid game. Uh, moving on, I went into Divine Ruin because look at the enemy team. We have an Erlong Shen, a Mulan, an X Shell in the mid lane. We're going to need to be able to apply some anti heal. Uh, Divine Ruin is the absolutely best item to do that uh, as a mage. It also gives us some flat penetration, which is very important in the early game. Why? Because your enemy laner and the people you're going to be dealing with, which would be the assassin or maybe the hunter if you're ganking the, the duel lane, they don't have many protections. Right, so per, uh, you know, for example, one ten percent of a very small number is going to be a very small number, right? Uh, but ten flat penetration when with someone that has not a lot of penetration, that ends up becoming pretty significant. Uh, the best way I can put this into words is: imagine the enemy mid laner having ten protections in the early game. If you were to have ten percent penetration, then you'd actually have one penetrate. You would delete one of their penetration because they have ten. But if you were to have an item usually gives you anywhere from 10 to 15 flat penetration, then you're getting rid of that penetration entirely. Whereas if you have 10 penetration, uh, percent penetration in the early game, you're only getting rid of one protection, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. The tankier characters, you want percent penetration. The squishier characters, you want flat penetration. Uh, but the truth of the matter is you need both and i know you guys like the way i just use my alt for cc immunity that's also one thing i'm going to talk about very briefly if you can use your alt instead of your actives you will always do so think of actives as your very last option your very last line of defense before dropping dead right so use any other resource instead of your relics um moving on uh second item uh what is it? Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation accomplishes a couple of things, but specifically, it allows you to actually have more cooldown reduction, uh, use abilities more often, and it gives you some more power and pers uh, sorry, flat penetration. Again, two flat penetration items I think is a sweet spot. Once you have two flat penetration items in the early game, you're basically doing close to true damage towards the enemy mid laner, which is very, very important. Uh, moving forward, Soul Gem. I really like Soul Gem. It does one specific thing for us. It maxes out your cooldown reduction. Uh, but secondly, it gives you some form of healing and some form of extra burst damage. Uh, when you get a proc of this item, almost as if you're using an extra ability on them, and considering you already have four damaging abilities, having this fifth, uh, you know, kind of burst is pretty, pretty powerful. But more specifically, again, because you don't have an escape and you don't have an easy way to avoid big abilities that do damage, you're a bit more susceptible to falling into a lower health whenever you're fighting in these team fights. It's going to allow you to kind of help you sustain throughout the team fight with the healing that you gain from this item. Not necessary, but I'm very, very fond of this item on this character. But moving forward, these items are very effective against dealing with the squishier targets. What if this Athena or what if this, um, you know, Mulan decide to go on me? It's going to be a bit hard if I'm not doing much damage to those characters. So I reserve the last two items against those tank here characters. The first one is Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is a must this season with tanks being as powerful as they are. You need to have Soul Reaver, you need to have a way to counter these tankier characters through how much health they are able to acquire and how many protections they are able to acquire and how little power is, you know, how, how we're able to or how we're not able to acquire as much power as we used to in prior seasons. Uh, so what Soul Reaver does is it basically does bonus damage depending on how much health they have. The higher amount of health, the higher the damage will be, right? This bonus damage, however, is not true damage. 
it is affected by their protection. So the more protections that they have, the less this bonus number will be. So we follow it up with uh, an item that gives us a lot of percent penetration. This situation is going to be Obsidian Shard. Obsidian Shard is going to get give us a lot of penetration, 20%, and then also 10% from the passive putting is at 30. This is ensuring not only that we regularly do more damage to these tankier characters, but also that Soul Reaver is doing more damage per activation. And considering that we have full cooldown reduction in this build, and we're on a character like Morgan that strives on just completely spamming all of the time using her abilities whenever they're up, then the cool thing about this is that you're constantly applying this extra damage, right? Constant, constant extra damage based on their health. This coupled together with the fact that you have two flat penetration items allows you to do both. Take care of the tanks and take care of the squishier targets. Yes, you can one shot. Yes, if one of the tankier characters goes on you, you're going to be able to handle yourself uh, and you're not going to just have to focus on running. You can actually go offensive. Uh, and if you don't believe me, you guys can rewind and see me completely 100 to 0 this Mulan in a very short amount of time, right? Um, even if you're not going to be one-shotting the tanks, it might take a couple of abilities. You're, it's still to the point where you deal enough damage and have enough CC so that you can say, hey, you, I might not be able to one-shot you, uh, you know, enemy tank your character, but I'm doing enough damage towards where I'm threatening to you. You can't sit here and fight me for an extended amount of time because, again, you're going to slowly lose your health bar and I'm going to, alongside Soul Gem, be gaining some health from fighting you. Uh, and overall, it's just going to go well for you, as you could tell from that fight with the Mulan. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it helpful. Uh, and with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. You'll get to see the stats here at the end. Um, and while I show you guys how much damage we did and all the statistics of the match, I want to remind you that I do post every single day. Uh, so if that's something, if this video is something you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe so you can never miss out on another video. Bye!